The PSSPP is the best PSP emulator out there and in this video I'll show you how to install it on your PC with the best settings for graphics and performance and also how to import save files and how to use cheats as well. This is the complete setup guide step by step starting now. So we'll begin by downloading the emulator itself. We're gonna get the latest development build for it. The link for this page will be on the description of this video. Right here below where it says latest 20 builds, you're gonna get the latest version. And this tutorial is for Windows PC. So this is the version we're gonna get right here. You're gonna click on the first link that ends with .zip. So go ahead and click on this one to download and put this on the desktop of your PC. Next, if you are on Windows 10, you're also going to need 7-zip to extract the file. You're not going to need this on Windows 11 because Windows 11 has its own native extracting feature. You're going to go here on this page. The link will also be on the description and you're going to click on this download button right here to get that. And you're also going to drop this on the desktop of your PC. Okay, so now on your desktop with both of these files, we're going to start by installing 7-zip. That is this file right here. And all you have to do is just double click on this file. This window will open and all you got to do is just click on this install button right here. It'll only take a few moments and there you go. 7-zip is installed. Now click on close. And at this point, you can go ahead and delete the original 7-zip file. We're not going to need this anymore. Now, starting with the emulator itself, what you're going to do here is click on this file with the right button of your mouse. And now you should see the 7-zip name right here. But if you are on Windows 10, you just have to click on where it says extract or something like that. But on Windows 10, put your mouse on top of 7-zip and you're going to select this option here. Extract to PPSSPP and a bunch of stuff. That way, all the files will be inside a folder. So go ahead and click on this one. And in the same location, you're going to see a folder with the emulator. And at this point, you can also go ahead and delete the original zip file. And now you just have to double click on this folder to open. And inside, you're going to see all of these files right here. And all you have to do is just double click on this Windows 64 application file to start the emulator. So go ahead and do that. And as such, you're going to see a little intro for the emulator. This would be a good time to subscribe to the channel and also leave a like on this video. So when you start the emulator, it's going to list a bunch of folders here from your PC, right? And this is the moment to select the folder where you want the emulator to scan for your games. And this can be anywhere on your PC. But what I like to do here is back on the emulator folder. I just click anywhere here with the right button select new and then folder and I'm just gonna call this folder here games but like I said this can be anywhere on your PC and you can name it whatever you want right so now I'm gonna go back to the emulator and you're going to click on this browse button right here now you just navigate to the location of the emulator folder or anywhere on your PC where you're going to put your games as you know and in my case I'm going to click here on the games folder and then click on select folder on the bottom. That way the emulator will scan this folder for the games I'm going to drop. I have here with me a couple of games and you can see that three of them are on the ISO disk image file format and there's also this one on the CHD format. And these two formats are the most common ones that you're going to find out there on the seven C's. But CHD is better because you get a smaller file size compared to the ISO format and it's still the full game. But this is going to depend on you. Both of these formats work just fine either way. Now, if we go back to the emulator and you had the emulator open while putting your games, you just have to click here on this refresh button. And just like that, the emulator will list the games you have. By default, it's on the grid format, but if you click here, you can change this to the list format so you can see the name of your games. Now we are going to tweak the emulator settings to get the best performance in graphics on your games. If you click on settings, it will apply to every game you have. But if you want to give individual game settings, 
Then you have to right click the game and then you select this option, create game configuration. And this can be useful for games that require specific settings in order to work fine. But on this tutorial, I'm going to go with the settings option here on the right. So go ahead and click on this one. And on the first option, graphics, the first setting back end, go ahead and click on it. And in this emulator, the best back end is Vulkan, not only for performance, but also because by selecting Vulkan, we can enable the MSAA anti-aliasing, which will make your games look much better. But in case Vulkan doesn't show up for you, that means your PC does not support it. In that case, you can try with Direct3D 11 or Direct3D 9. But moving on, click on Vulkan. It will require you to restart the emulator. So go ahead and click on Restart. And when you're back, click on Settings once again. Below that, we have the rendering resolution. And on this setting, the higher the resolution, the better the game will look. But it's going to require more of your PC. And as always, what you can do here is experiment. You can start the game with something like the 2x resolution and see if the performance is fine and if the graphics is okay as well. From there, you can increase the resolution even further up until your PC can support that. In my case, I'm just going to keep mine at 1080p or X resolution. Now, like I said before, because we're using Vulkan, we have the MSAA option here. And just like the resolution, this setting here can affect performance. So you can try playing with 8x option and see how the performance is looking like. Now, still here on rendering, by default, the VSync option is turned off. And if you're seeing a lot of screen tearing on your game, you can come back here and turn this option on to get rid of that. But it's going to introduce a bit of input lag on your game. So just keep this one off and see how the game is looking like. For the next options, frame rate control, speed hacks, and performance, you don't have to change anything here unless the game you're playing requires that. Or if your PC is having trouble running the game. There's no specific website where you can find the best settings for each game, but you can try the Discord of PPSSPP or even just Google. Now here on texture upscaling, this is an option here that's going to depend on you. Personally, I don't like using this option, so I just keep it at off here. But for some games, the upscale type you select here could make the game look better. So this is an option that you can experiment with and see how it looks like. Below that, on texture filtering, the anisotropic filtering should already be set to 16x. If not, go ahead and change to this one. It makes the game look better and has minimal impact on performance. And below that for texture filtering, click on this one and change to auto max quality. And that's pretty much it for the graphics settings. But if you want a more detailed graphics guide for this emulator, I'm going to recommend you this video from Warped Polygon. He goes much more into detail about this and it's definitely worth a watch. The link will be on the description of this video. Moving on, we're going to configure the controls. So click here on this option and you're going to click on the first option, control mapping. And here on the emulator, you can play with the keyboard just fine or you can use a controller. And this emulator supports pretty much all the controllers out there from PlayStation and Xbox and even third party controllers as well if they have one of the supported APIs. If you don't have your controller plugged in, go ahead and do that right now. And when you do, you're going to click on this option here, auto configure. And if your controller is supported, you should see right here. And all you have to do is just click on the name of your controller. And just like that, the emulator will configure for you. But if you want to change individual inputs, you just have to click on the respective button of your controller here and then press that button on your controller. There are more settings here on the bottom as well if you want to play with that. And that's it here. Click on back. And for the remaining settings, audio, networking, and everything else, you don't have to change anything here unless you know what you're doing. And at this point, you're ready to play your games. So you can just click on the one you want to play 
and you can take it from there. To go full screen, press F11 on your keyboard. Now I'm gonna show you how to import a save file from the internet. And one place where you can get a bunch of save files for your games is on gamefacts.com. The link will be on the description of this video. And for this video, I'm gonna use God of War Chains of Olympus as an example. The game is right here, but let's just say that your game isn't showing up here, right? What you're gonna do is click here on search game titles, and you're just gonna type the name of the game you're looking for. Right here, click on that. And in the games page, you're going to click here on the saves tab. And you're going to see a bunch of stuff here. But what you're looking for is where it says PSP game save directory. And also make sure that it is the same region as your game. And these are all the save files available for you to download. I'm just going to pick the first one right here. Click on this download icon. And you can put this anywhere on your PC, but on this tutorial, I'm going to download this to the same emulator folder we have been using. There you go. It is this file right here. This is a zip one, so we're going to have to extract this with 7-zip. But this time we're going to do this a little bit different. You can just double click this file and you're going to see here. In the case of God of War, we have two folders with some files inside, but it could be different depending on your game. But the method for putting them on the emulator is the same. So the location where they're going to go is this one. On the emulator folder, click on the memstick folder, open the PSP folder, save data folder, and there you go. This is empty because this is a fresh emulator and I haven't saved in game yet. Otherwise, you are going to see the same folders we got from the internet. Now all you just have to do is move these folders in here. So you're going to press and hold the left button on your mouse, select both folders. Now press and hold once again, drag them here and let go. If you had folders in here before, then you just have to click on where it says replace the files in the destination. And that's it. Now when you start the game, you just have to load the save in game as normal and your imported save files are going to be there. Now, for using cheats on the emulator, first we need to get a database for them. And the one I'm going to recommend is this one. The link for this page will be on the description of the video. And in here, all you gotta do is just click where it says here. And you're also going to download this to the emulator folder. And we're gonna take it from there. Back on the emulator folder, we have the cheats file. This is a zip file, so you can just double click this one like before. And inside this folder, the only file we need is this cheat.db. And this file is going into this folder right here. Double click on memstick, open the PSP folder, and open the cheats folder. This is the place. Now back on 7-zip, you're just going to press and hold the cheat file, and then bring in here, and there you go. Now, you're going to go back to the emulator, and you're going to start the game you want to activate cheats. With the game running, you're going to press the escape button of your keyboard to bring up this menu. And you're going to click here on settings. Then you go to system, scroll down a bit, and you're going to click on the option enable cheats. It's turned off by default. So now click on back. And now you should see the cheats option showing up here. So click on that. It should be empty and what you're going to do is click on import from PSP, the first option. And just like that, you're going to see all the cheats available for this game. And to activate them, you just have to click on the cheat you want to use. And if you go back to the game, you should see it working. Depending on the cheat you activated, you probably have to restart the game if you want to turn that off. I have many tutorial videos like this on the channel, so if you like what you saw, don't forget to check out my other stuff. Subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and as always, I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching.